Hey, good afternoon everyone. It's me behind the uh, screen uh, just looking at Simon Kerwin's boat. I'm just going to start the first of uh, a bit of a technical run through on exactly what's going on. Simon's playing around with the boat right now so I'll just explain some things about it. Uh, it's a Biscay 36 firstly and uh, there's, a, there's another one. Michael Goog has another Biscay 36 and this one's a sort of cutter sloop slutter rig. Uh, he's got two uh, furling systems right up at the bow. Uh, no real uh, defined inner force day, but he could clip something on to do a storm jib if he wanted to, which is kind of interesting. Simon's done the refit himself over a couple of years. It's extremely uh, light and very simple. It's not a complex boat. He's a performance sailor. Uh, he's out for a win, and he knows how to get the sails working, and he's got a boat to match. So this will be a boat to watch. Technically on paper, it might be a uh, period to be slower than a Russell 36 but uh, he's really prepared this boat very well absolute contrast if you compare it for instance to uh, Edward's boat from Canada Russell 36 with two of everything this is much much simpler and uh, if you look at the rig I'm going to scan up here and hopefully you see it you'll see he's got a single spreader rig which is very interesting this is the latest and greatest technology for him it's not a case of he's uh, hasn't turned it into a twin spreader rig but everyone else is going twin spreader uh, and there's a real solid argument to say that why one spreader may now be better than two so that'll also be an interesting situation to watch and we'll talk about that later on uh, this could be a boring alert boring 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 for someone that's looking for some action on the GGR this is a technical run through on the boat I'm just going to be talking about bits and pieces uh, so if that's not your cup of tea, uh, we'll do some general village stuff later on. You'll see he's got two uh, spinnaker poles, which are mainly used for, well, kites obviously, but also for booming out, um, you know, booming out uh, head sails in the Southern Ocean. It's a much better idea uh, because you're rolling around a lot with waves and the spinnaker can sometimes get wrapped up on four stays. So one of the th advantages of having those two furling gears out there is you can run twins very easy. If it's like a number one or number two, you can put the windward sail out on a pole and the leeward sail which is usually the bigger of the two is sort of loose and is not pulled out at all and if the wind increases you can just roll them up so you still get plenty of power without using the spinnakers when you're when you're you know powering downwind in the in the southern ocean anyway he's got a very simple rig and uh, interestingly Simon hasn't got a lot of the uh, a lot of the equipment for reefing and so on coming back to the cockpit there could be various reasons for that one is keep it simple save weight so every time he reefs the mainsail he's actually going to have to go forward and uh, do it mechanically you might say he's going to have to put wet weather gear on head up there and just do the reef and then get back to the cockpit um, as you get older maybe it's a bit simpler to do it in the cockpit like Jean-Luc and me maybe um, so that's another uh, difference he's also got a solid vang now solid vangs can be good and bad the, the big advantage of a vang like that is you don't need a topping lift in the southern ocean if you hit uh, the boom hits the water when you're rolling sometimes it can be a problem later on you'll notice that uh, tapio on uh, on his boat Asteria, he had a solid vang for the last edition. He's completely removed it. He said it broke, smashed five times. His boom is a lot lower, and it was in the water a lot, but he's just gone for a simple, plain uh, block and tackle system for the vang. And uh, who knows who's got it right and who's got it wrong. But this boom is quite a lot higher than Tapio's, so it should be okay. For performance sailing, there is an advantage to a solid vang. Uh, you can push the push the boom up easy it's spring loaded that tackle gear that you see it on there is actually to compress the spring uh, inside the solid bang and uh, you know you can play around with sail shape a bit more so the, the big distinct difference is that he's got nothing coming back to the mast so that's pretty cool um, if we then just head back the usual deal with the dodger uh, and uh, soft protection and the advantage of that is that you can fold it away if it cuts up really bad and it gets rid of the windage and all the rest of it as well so uh, um, that's good because you don't want any any windage down the back of the boat because then you can't run off against the strong winds in the southern ocean um, and so it's kind of nice to fold it away that's uh, a big plus couple of things there you see a really really very good uh, backstay antenna for his HF radio so got that black wire going down on the left there and then it's separated from the rigging wire uh, the rigging wire is, is uh, holding the mast up that's got twin backstays but you have to isolate the um, the coax cable so you don't lose power you get power loss signal strength loss uh, if they're touching each other then around the back of the boat that big white thing sitting over there just here just 
there is the Echo Max transponder. Uh, any radar that hits that, it'll it'll electronically be amplified and bounce back uh, straight away, uh, making the boat look like a 120 foot or 40 metre steel fishing boat, which is uh, uh, good for safety. And also an alarm goes off inside the boat, so they know that there is a ship out there. Uh, the next thing along the list, that little just there. That little white hockey puck, that's actually the YB3i. It's a uh, satellite tracking device, so that's where we get our tracking information that goes onto the, uh, onto the website, on the Yellowbrick Tracker, um, and uh, it's pretty important. The Glomex one there, the stainless steel one, that's probably for his AIS, um, and there's an AIS transponder on board as well as an AIS separate independent unit that's an alarm. Simon's going with uh, a water generator, he's got a a, a Watt and C um, water hydro generator there that'll, that'll pivot down into the water. It's got the propeller on the back there that keeps uh, spinning to um, put put power into the boat. Uh, basically, anyone using their engine for for power, uh, they may suffer a, a two-hour time penalty for every litre of fuel that's consumed. We give them 25 litres. Uh, just to keep the, the engine serviced in case it's needed in an emergency, but anything after that they actually pay a pretty strict, uh, stiff penalty at the end of the race. Hydrovane wind vane there, which is a um, auxiliary steering system. You can see the rudder in the water, uh, and then it comes up and it's got the, the head there, the vane head. That'll have a, um, a material wind vane put on there, so it's wind... Uh, activated and water powered and it's completely independent of the, the ship's own system so Simon will lock the tiller uh, you can see he's removed his steering wheel and he's actually fitted a tiller because it's a lot simpler saves weight uh, and that'll be locked off in position and not steering the boat at all the main rudder of the boat is actually quite a bit forward of the, the, the transom so having auxiliary rudder down the back that's, that's driven by the wind vane uh, is actually very efficient and can steer a straighter course and if you're steering a straighter course then you're going to get home quicker so that's uh, part of that as well um, what else at the back that little bracket there the funny little bracket in the very corner of the boat that's for his walker towing log uh, we don't allow electronic distance measuring devices you're towing a little spinner on a line that turns like a clock that tells you the distance that you're actually going um, and some people often ask if they're sailing solo why do they need a life buoy and some of the other safety equipment around the cockpit uh, they need it in case they end up having to assist someone else they've got to still get out of here and there's boats around so once they're clear in, of the start line in the ocean then they can actually remove a lot of that safety gear put it down below and keep it for when they need it when they're coming into film drops and so on um, okay you can see how simple I'm going to get on board I've already checked with Simon I'll try not to slip over here you on board, Simon? Probably not. Oh, but I just checked before. I'm just going to walk you around the boat. Now, this is really different. Light, simple, no lines coming down the back. Nearly every other boat uh, you'll see in the GGR, probably most of them, are actually uh, running things, uh, uh, you know, everything in the cockpit. So you can sit here and you don't have to gear up with your wet weather gear and you actually end up... Um, you know sort of still still semi-protected if you've got to come out in a hurry uh, I'm a big fan of it but Simon's trying to save weight and keep it simple so so that's straightforward even the winches aren't oversized they're, they're not too big I wouldn't say they're too small but they're certainly not too big because he's saving weight uh, very clean cockpit um, this is uh, this is a boat to watch so he's done a really good job of the preparation there's no question there and I think you'll see it in the performance he performed really well in the um, in the prologue so another simple thing check out the size of this that's his main sheet blocks he's not wasting weight anywhere you know some of the other boats have got a huge amount of you know great big blocks and uh, many of them anyway I'm gonna sneak down below now and see what I can see without the boss here uh, they've already apologised, so it's messy, and I said, that's exactly what I want to see. Check this out. God, what a grub. The dishes are still in the sink. Don't tell anyone. Anyway, <laughs> it's a very much uh, a uh, production uh, sailboat race is the GGR. And you can see here, everything still exists. You know, still got a headliner and still got uh, all the bits and pieces. But uh, straight away, you can see it's very efficient again and very simple. He hasn't got big complications. He's got lee cloths in the books and, and racks here for things. So, uh, and uh, that'll just go up and seal that area completely for a knockdown or a rollover. All the lockers down here will be locking. Um, they've got bed bunk um, 
belts here to strap himself in as well. Uh, again, very straightforward up, up the front, you know. It's uh, pretty much a uh, production boat. I know that uh, if you look at the, the chain plates even, they're incredibly strong. They've been strengthened with bits and pieces. But I've got to say, Simon's is sensibly sized, not tractor bulletproof sort of uh, um, bomb proof because again he's engineered it and not wanting to waste any weight so um, it's pretty interesting indeed uh, there's not a lot to show because it's just like another boat it's not like getting inside an Amoka and looking at all the bits I think what I'm showing you now is pretty familiar for any uh, typical cruising boat okay and uh, uh, he's done all the important things without going too extreme on it there's the weather facts there. We're allowing HF weather facts. Uh, most of them have been bought second hand. Some have been given to them. Uh oh, I'm sprung. I'm sprung. The boss is here. <laughs> How's it going? I've been swearing. When are you going to do the bloody dishes? Jeepers. This is disgusting. Hey, yeah, jeepers. Turn these glasses. Turn these glasses from the beer. Yeah, okay. Well, I just got to the delicate bit. The um, I just got to the chart table, oh, yeah. and uh, I was sure I pull it down. Hang on, I'm driving the grip, the the gimbal here. No, it's pretty cool. I was just talking about the weather facts. Have you got yours working now? Have you well, tested it? It's it, it, it's trans it's working. Yeah. I haven't actually got a decent isobaric chart off it yet, yeah. but I th I'm hoping to get one because it is working. Yeah. So, cool. okay. Uh, I'm pretty confident it's uh, yeah, it's yeah. giving. That's cool. And uh, lots of simple stuff. You know, this is all the stuff that you'll see on a normal cruising boat. That's your transponder there. Oh, that's the that's the swap over aerial. Uh, and you've got your HF. You've got your HF here in the watertight box. That's the AIS. Yeah, that's and it there. And, and it's a splitter as well. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, so fine. very, very simple application. We have two systems. Where's your CITO on your other AIS alarm? Down there. Okay, there's we'll get to that here. in a minute. Oh, I'll show you the back. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so down here, that's the automatic antenna tuner unit down the back there for the HF. And then you've got some electrical charging systems, probably for the Watt and C and the solar panels and all that sort of stuff. Uh, EPIRB there, ready to go. And uh, oh, down the bottom here, that looks like the Ecomax and the CTEL. Okay. That'd be right, yeah. So that's the that's controller for the uh, Ecomax transponder, that big white aerial at the back, and also the AIS uh, alarm. So, and which is your favourite bunk? Is, is it the quarter berth or the settee berth? No, I'm actually settee berths. Two, yeah. The two settee berths. The, uh, the normal boat cushion is going off, and yeah. then I've got a, a beanbag one that's there, yeah. and I've got a foam one in a sort of semi waterproof uh, bag there. So I've got the choice of both, and, yeah. that, and it also goes on the floor, which is why the, the life raft is probably going to go on its side there to give me enough room to put it on the floor. So. Yeah. Are you fully loaded yet? Uh, yeah, we're. You're fully loaded. Fuel well, and, I mean, food and water and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Wow. It's, yep. it's, you've got plenty of space, eh? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, so I'm yeah. not fully unloaded yet. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, a critical piece of equipment down there that's your barograph, and you've got a barometer up the top. Uh, yeah. The Some people wonder what they are, and I always say that anyone going around the world, especially in the Southern Ocean, that doesn't have a barograph doesn't know what they're doing. And understand the value of understanding weather. <laughs> it could be that some people who have barographs don't really know what they're doing, but uh, I've at least got a barograph. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so, um, and I, I was just mentioning before, I don't know whether I, oh, I'm still trying, waiting for the gimbal to catch up with me. Uh, we require all the critical electronics, particularly the HF, ra HF radio, to be fully waterproof. So it's in a box that can be sealed up in a storm. You can't use it when it's in the box, but um, it, it, at least you know if you get water down here and it does a big wave, then you're going to be uh, going to be able to keep it dry and open it up after. Um, what's the secret weapon, Simon? What's the secret weapon? Yeah. Um, <laughs> a good question. Um, well, I think the, the hydro veins, well, it's not very secret, is it? So, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, frogs. Frogs. <laughs> ah, I've been caught out. I've got oh. a frog on board. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, um, yeah. Secret weapon. No, there's no secret weapon. It's, oh, a, it's a very simple, light boat. Uncluttered, yeah. uncomplicated. That's yeah. obviously your intention. That's it. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully it's fairly well easily driven in, uh, in, in light airs. Yeah. Still some uncertainties about how it will perform in the big waves down in the Southern Ocean, but uh, yeah. there's only one way of finding out. Cool. And, uh, you got a dunny? I didn't have a look. You were using a bucket man? or you? No, no, I'm, I'm proper toilet. Oh, good, good. Oh, you haven't been yeah, inspecting yeah. up in the sail locker? And no, no, like that's that. cool. No. I didn't want to open the sail locker because everything could fall out. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's all safe up there. All, okay, all that's cool. 
All right. Well, you're looking really so good. That's all wet room up there with uh, with uh, spinnakers in particular and uh, light weather genoa and then uh, all the wet, wet weather gear and stuff like that because yeah. that all drains down into what was the shower room. Yeah. And yeah, we've got proper toilets on board. No. How much water are you carrying? Carrying uh, 220 in the tank, because that's what yeah. it is, and then 100 in addition in, in cans. 300 litres. 320. 320. Yeah, 320. That's yeah. Right. yeah. But I mean, it, cool. it'll be. We'll be. I'm looking forward to some exactly. rain like this. Yeah. And and that's your uh, that's your time bomb, the galley. Yeah, that's uh, that's not actually the one I'll be taking because that's yeah. the one I'm using at the moment. But yeah. uh, there'll be a time bomb down there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So jet boil on a single burner. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, keep no, the light. Yeah, um, and that's the wine, right. wine stock there. So you're both so simple. We're just about finished. Nothing more to talk about. Uh, I've advised them about your choice of a single spreader rig. Tell me about that. And no, no halliers back to the cockpit. <laughs> Sorry, you know, the, the, the single spreader rig. Yeah, and no halliers back to the cockpit. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, the uh, halliers back to the cockpit's a bit of the design of the boat. Is is that it wasn't going to be easy, and I don't like clutter up there. It gets rid of all the friction, so I just have to suffer to do reefing and uh, and hoisting and stuff. So yeah. that's but that's fine. It keeps everything clean. Yeah. Uh, the single spreader rig. I can't take any credit for that really. I just asked um, my designers uh, to uh, specify a mast section and their advice on rig, and we had a chat about it when they came back with it, and I've gone with it. I'm not I'm not a mast expert. The interesting thing is that the same. Uh, same company, same mast, uh, came up with a two-spreader rig for a competitor. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, so one of us is being nobbled. I'm not sure who it is. <laughs> no, it comes out of the boat. This yeah, is an identical yeah. boat. Yeah, it wasn't identical. Yeah. No, the other was. As, yeah. as you know, I was involved with the boat project the, nearly a year ago, and the designer came up with a single-spreader rig, yeah. virtually identical to yours. Yeah. And I said, you got to be kidding me. No yeah. way. And in the end, the spa makers, well, it was actually... You know, I was looking at what Sparkraft were doing and a few others and stuff. I thought, oh, hang on a minute. And then lo and behold, you turn up with a single spreader rig. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well I'm very happy with it. But uh, yeah. And, uh, it's a, it's a yeah. cool, simple design. No, it's it's a, more than just a single spreader rig. That's yeah, just yeah. A, yeah. That's the obvious thing you see, the yeah. single spreader. So that'll be interesting. We'll be watching and uh, look forward to seeing it at the end. Okay. Great. Good. Any, anything you want to say? Anything you want to do? You know, no, you're, you're no, set? I think that's good. Happy? I think you've, you've probably seen it all. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm happy. Um, yeah. Got a little bit of tidying to do, and but nothing too serious. And what are you going to do with the boat when they finish? Uh, well, I'll have to uh, consult with my uh, co-owner. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sponsor, eh? That's cool. Sponsor, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that came pretty much at the last minute, as, as, yeah. as you know. Yeah. Uh, Howden's a good, good company. They've got a good environmental uh, program, yeah. which, uh, which they're going to use this to drive their, their environmental program of uh, zero waste. Yeah. Uh, so, so road to zero, it's called yeah. zero emissions, zero waste. So that is totally in line with, with the aspirations of uh, GGR. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and they'll be down. Uh, they'll be down uh, shortly. Actually. Well, yeah. I've got to fess up here. We just got all of our merchandise, and every hat is in a bag, and it's like a total disaster. Uh, and, uh. Where, and where was it made? Although they were Poland, you know, which is oh, okay. unfortunate. That's not, but anyway. so, that's not so bad. <laughs> At least it wasn't flown from China. That's, no, uh, that's no, a bonus. No, 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 no. Anyway, another story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we can't be perfect all the time. Yeah. So, well, that's cool. Yep, good luck, eh? And well, we'll, uh, thanks, we'll see you later. Jane Jane's doing her thing there. So we'll shut down now and we'll try and do some more boats. We're going to try and do a lot, but we won't get them all up live now. And we'll uh, keep them for later and uh, run them uh, while the event's underway because it's always very interesting to look at the way people are converting Converting and refitting their boats. Uh, interesting story here. Is that where you're going to stay your life raft? Uh, fess up. Go on, fess up. That's where the life raft is going to be to keep it nice and protective should I ever want to use it. It has an additional secure place uh, which you can see in the, yes. in the aft end of the cockpit, <laughs> okay. which, which is where it was at the safety inspection. Yeah, exactly. I'm, well, the reason I'm saying it, we, as GGR, we, we have safety equipment requirements and uh, you know we, they've got to be specified out there. But once the entrance done and signed off, we don't actually specify how they use that as safety equipment. And quite a few of the skippers are bringing their rafts inside. They've made the personal decision that's the best place to be. So uh, even John Luke, you know, in the last one, it was cleared and set up uh, in the 2018 edition. You know, once we have the advice on where we want to see it for the safety inspection, if they want to bring him below, they can do that. It's fine. Uh, so okay, good luck. Thank you. And uh, I'll, I've got a new trick here, which is the selfie one, Ching Ching. That one. Turn it around. Oh, hello. It's me here. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta press this button. Okay, and then wait one. Wait one. Okay. okay.